CIP and Wikipedia. The moderator for this, this panel is Angela Tong, COO of CoinTime and partner of Chinsei Chinese Partners. So let us have a great panel. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Angela Tong, one of the partners of Tinsa Finance and also the COO of Quantai. Uh, so Tinsa Finance is the top one blockchain media in China and for Quantai in the different language version of Tinsa Finance. So uh, first I want our uh, panelists to introduce themselves in a very short way. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Christopher Dekosko. CEO and co-founder of One Capital. We are based in Luxembourg. It's an asset management company. We um, manage two different funds. One uh, dedicated to uh, pre-ICO STO equity and tokens, and uh, the other one uh, investing just in large related companies in equity. Oh, my name is Jerry Yang. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm from Hong Kong. I'm the founding chairman for Hong Kong Blockchain Association. I just told Larry earlier that uh, how uh, I got, got into the blockchain industry. Um, as the classic investor uh, with PC, hedge fund, and the PE background, I invested in quite a lot of uh, small startups, companies, last five years. And most of them just went to high say gold. And uh, many of them gave me a lot of tokens. And then, of course, later on, I found that the uh, token is actually more. In a way, uh, making more money than the stocks. And that's how I uh, end up with the blockchain uh, industry. And Hong Kong Blockchain Association is uh, an open uh, association. Uh, we invite everyone to join us from everywhere of the world. And everybody can also become our super uh, Well, where we call it uh, uh, honorary chairman or chairman by your group of work and a proof of stake. So whenever you come to Hong Kong, you tell us uh, you are going to become a member of Hong Kong Blockchain Association and also tell us your background. You might also be qualified to become our operator chairman and co-chairman as well. And again, welcome to Hong Kong next time. Um, hello everyone, my name is Leila. I'm the founder and CEO of Blockchain. As you may see, I'm from China, Shanghai. Um, and I'm also on the foundation board of a non-for-profit knowledge hub called Blockchain Center. And we now in 12 countries and 50 cities, uh, 15 cities. And we've been uh, giving free blockchain class and uh, tutorials for more than 50,000 people to date. Hi, my name is Larry Singer. I am the Chief Information Officer of Everkia. And uh, long ago, I was co-founder of Wikipedia.
to blockchain in any kind of industry now. So um, the blockchain fit completely in it, and it can really disturb uh, any kind of industry. Like, well, an announcement like two weeks ago from Consensus and Microsoft for uh, LMH brands, luxury brands, uh, to do traceability of the goods. Um, I mean, a lot of people were working on this and thinking about this kind of thing. And this is a kind of example of supply chain with a major company uh, getting into it. Uh, so far, it was just startups trying to do this kind of thing. And actually, I, can, I know a couple of projects that now they are in blockchain because of them. But, uh, but uh, yeah, now we can see that uh, major companies uh, embrace the technology uh, in a good way. And it can change a lot of things for traceability, especially in luxury which we know that there is a lot of fake product and stuff like this so we can do, we can uh, really know where the product is coming from not just the luxury right away, but the, in any kind of supply chain Thank you uh, Blockchain can change the whole world for sure uh, The world is made of people People are interacting with each other from two angles from my perspective Number one is the social uh, perspective uh, or social aspect and people are passing around information and we do gossip uh, all the time uh, according to uh, anthropology uh, human beings become successful simply because they are doing gossip all the time right? they are very social and they like to talk with each other so information has been passing around all the time and nowadays, well, just like with the narrative of the world uh, their uh, information you put on the internet or put on the cloud uh, possibly uh, all public information for those centralized uh, managers or the uh, cloud service providers. Uh, blockchain can provide us the real right uh, of our own information. Therefore, we would have uh, uh, the, or I would say, the control or the domain of our information. So that's the way blockchain is going to change the information side and also to social uh, to change our social interaction with each other. The other aspect uh, to, uh, well, uh, of the human interaction would be the economic side. And in the past, we know that the, uh, the whole economy is controlled by Wall Street. And nowadays, we talk about ICO, now we talk about SPO, and many uh, startup companies would uh, easily gain uh, VC investment. And also, the company or the VCs can also gain their liquidity in a much shorter time period because of ICO, because of SPO. And from there on, uh, people would easily, uh, would be easy, uh, would easily, uh, would easily get their access to capital. And entrepreneurs would easily start their own startups. And therefore, I would say, uh, blockchain also democratized uh, the whole capital world. And the economy will be changing from there. And, and that's what I say, the, uh, the blockchain technology will change the world. So one team they invite me to come to this uh, summit, they want me to choose a topic. And I ask like, what kind of topics you have? And then cryptocurrency regulation and, you know, tech. And I said, do you have something related to social impact? And, you know, you know how we're doing social good with blockchain and then, um, Togo said, yeah, you know, we, we have, we, we have one panel, it's called, you know, how, stop thinking about perfect and thinking about how to change the world. And I'm like, okay, I want to be part of that panel because um, I believe that blockchain can change the world eventually. Or maybe a moment to improve the world to a better place. And then I'm so glad to see so many of you still here. This is the last panel. And uh, I thought if, you know, a lot of people still here, waiting to, to listen to the last panel, then there must be a lot of people believing that um, blockchain is not only about cryptocurrencies, but also about you know, how we're going to change the world. And people always say that blockchain is the future of the internet. So my thought, um, blockchain is, I think, uh, if internet changes the way people access to information, then blockchain changes the way people exchange value. Um, so we exchange the value of a digital asset, we exchange the value of a, you know, a digital voucher, 
will represent, this water represent our behaviors and actions and data which we contribute to the society. So I think if the technology can do that, then eventually this technology can improve the world. So I, I think it's practically inevitable that blockchain is going to change the world. It's just a matter of time. Um, I think a couple of the reasons, I'm just going to speak in broad generalities and principles. Um, the, the fact that blockchain uses or enables tokenization, uh, which provides rewards to people um, to uh, interact with each other in different economic ways without top-down direction, without a middleman, um, is itself um, and, and they get rewards for, for doing that. Um, it is just such an absurdly awesome idea um, that uh, it's just a matter of time before we actually create the killer app that, that demonstrates how awesome it is. That's the, the important thing. That, that the main reason that blockchain solutions haven't been adopted so far, it quite simply is that blockchain technology is really difficult to develop and get right. And you not only have to do that, you have to do that at the same time that you're making a product that is actually superior to uh, the ones that are on offer. And um, so once there are enough blockchain products that illustrate why blockchain is a fantastic idea. People will actually start factoring in the fact that a product is on the blockchain um, more heavily. Okay, thank you all. And so, if blockchain do have the potential to change the world, so which sector of our economy will speak, uh, uh, significantly to uh, change by the blockchain technology? And could you give us some example? to our audience. Thank you. And 
somehow the growth of the capital gain is much bigger than the growth of the labor income within last 150 years. That's not fair either. So people would get richer and richer because they control the capital. And the other majority of part of the population would just become their slave or whatever, or maybe by uh, one day not be enough to you know, get their investment. However, security token tokenize your equity, tokenize your idea, tokenize everything you have, including your personal information, and if you offer that on uh, the blockchain system, then would the gate would, would uh, in, uh, you know, enable you to start your startup ASAP and also to help your investor to gain liquidity ASAP. I often ask the people, you want to go for IPO or you want to go security token offering? Well, a lot of people still have the dream of going IPO. But I encourage you here, everybody here, if you believe in blockchain, you better believe in security token offering. If you don't do that way, you are actually betraying yourself, betraying your own idea. So, come back to security token, how would it change? You know, everybody, everybody knows that uh, our day, or the banks, or the investment banking firms, and the uh, auditors, or the uh, lawyers, and the regulators, they are controlling the whole IP projects. However, if we have programmable token, in a liberal, or relatively speaking, liberal, more liberal uh, uh, jurisdiction environment, and we can easily do the security token offer for our own startups, for our own assets, and also enable the worldwide investors to access our project. And that's the way to really change the capital world. And only change the capital world, we would change the foundation, the economic foundation of the society. So I want every one of you here, if you really believe in the blockchain, you know, get out of the IPO market and join the security from the offer market. And say to my friend who's out here, if you want to sell any more capital for me, you better ask them to do privatization and do securitization on the token, uh, token work, not on the Australia shady liquidity work to the stock market. There. So, okay, everyone here, I would ask you to join me to start from security token offering right there and do it directly and do it correctly. Do it evolving the rule by bringing in the traditional investor into your project and give them the liquidity very soon. And that's the way I encourage you to do. And I think security token will be the next major revolution there. Thank you, Jay. And Lila, I think you have some very good examples. So could you tell us? Thank you. Well, but firstly, I mean, if my investor, you know, hear Jay's sharing, they may be very disappointed that IPO is no longer an option. <laughs> so we still think.